And welcome to Youth in Action. I am Nyangweso Grenis. In today's program, we have Bella Oyicho, a software developer at Lake Hub Kisumu. Bella, karibu sana. Sante sana. Tell us who you are and what it is that you do. So, I am a software developer at Lake Hub. So, for me, the target area for my software development is web development and system development. So, necessarily, when we talk about system, we are talking about the software that you see in supermarkets, in schools, in hospitals. So yes, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. And I can say I am a community person. I like to see my community grow, so I participate in community activities that will ensure, or will try to ensure that there is growth and there is change in the community. Interesting. You know, there is an assumption <laughs> that uh, little you know a little percentage of women are actual software developers in kenya yeah is there some truth to that there is some truth mm -hmm. but i can also say it's false in that as of right now the spaces that i am in i can see a lot of female software developers mm -hmm. but i can also say it is uh, true that they are not there because we are still trying to encourage that the, ba the number is balanced. The male and female ratio is the same. Mm -hmm. So we, as much as we are still trying to encourage more female software developers or more female in tech, we, the number is still not yet at an equivalent. Okay. And why do you think that is? I think because tech has always been a male-dominant industry. Uh, most people don't know, but the first line of code was written by a woman. So you see, in tech, we are the ones that are supposed to be dominating, not the other way around. So uh, the campaign of ensuring that there are more female developers, I think we will get to a point where it is an equivalent ratio. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so uh, what can you say has brought you this far as a female software developer? Uh, I think, for one, I can say it's being in the right place at the right time meeting the right people, because personally, I'd say, well, personally, it is true that I wasn't going to do tech as a career. I was going to do engineering. But then there was some, a little change that pushed me towards the direction of tech. Mm -hmm. And right now, I'd say I'd never go back to this. <laughs> uh, okay. My mom always says it's the same, same thing, yet when you introduce yourself, it's still engineering. But this other side is software engineering. Mm -hmm. But I find the passion in tech that I have, I don't think necessarily I'd have it uh, as the same as if I did civil engineering. Mm -hmm. So I'd say it's the circumstances and uh, the background works of God or if you believe in a supreme being. <laughs> yeah? So the different shift in things that push me towards that direction, I'd say are the contributing factors to what I'm doing today or what I'm passionate about today. Okay. And uh, just to mention, would you advise a young lady to join what Aye. you're doing? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Come the and join. Come the and join. Mm -hmm. Software engineering is the best thing you'll ever do. Okay. You don't necessarily in all careers, you won't say you build something from scratch. And in software, we build things from scratch and you see your work. Not necessarily you can't touch them if you are doing coding, but you can't see. You can't see the progress. You can't see that I built this nav bar, I built this menu bar, I built. So you see the fulfillment and the joy of actually finishing a project. Ah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So let's talk about Technovation Kenya. What is that and uh, what does it do? Technovation actually is uh, a project, it's a global project where. Uh, girls are educated in software development so it takes a period of three months and these three months we target high school girls they build uh, a project that is trying to solve a solution of a problem that is in their society so let's say if you see a problem in health how can you get tech to fix that problem in health mm -hmm. same to education and same so for the technovation we say we we are trying to uh, put our hands in each and every sector because we can't say that necessarily a target area we're doing is this. So whatever the innovation that you have and you can build it in tech is accepted. So the period of three months you get to be taught and not taught per se, but guided by a mentor. So the purpose of the mentor is to help you with 
areas that you feel that you're having a problem with. So if you don't know how to build a business model, the mentor is supposed to help you with the business model. Mm -hmm. So per se, it is global. So it is not just in Kenya. So when you get to advance uh, or when your project is selected after the three months, you go to Silicon Valley. <laughs> <laughs> and who is in tech and doesn't want to go to Silicon Valley? Interesting. So what happens in these uh, three months? Do you do trainings? Do you have maybe workshops that you go to or you attend or you facilitate? Or how does it happen? So as uh, the students that are selected by the school, you select five students. So it's only five students that are selected per school. Mm -hmm. So per team, it has to be five. Mm -hmm. After selecting the five students, you get to meet with your mentor and you talk about uh, the problem that are in your community and the ones that you like to solve. Mm -hmm. So for the one that we did, uh, the one that I helped or the one that I mentored this year, we were targeting health. We are they, <laughs> not we necessarily, because it's their project, I'm just a helping hand. They are trying to ensure that the response time of uh, in health, uh, so like when there's accidents, when there's when you go to a hospital, the response time or the time that you get assistance is shorter than the one that you have currently. Mm -hmm. So we don't attend conferences. It's just where you sit in class, you brainstorm on your project, you build the project, you create a business plan, you have uh, we do pitches. You get to pitch your idea. So the pitch is recorded, so the entire thing is submitted after the end of three months, and it is judged. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I'm curious to know, are there partners, or what kind of partners uh, do you have at Technovation Kenya to help have these business plans and uh, these different aspects of your project? So for Technovation Kenya, the partners that are there is Safaricom and Lake Hub. Mm -hmm. So Lake Hub helps in scouting the schools and selecting or helping with selection of mentors. And Safaricom has assist in uh, bundles and transportation reimbursement, yes. Mm -hmm. And is there a criteria to select the schools and the mentors? The criteria is present girls. Just pre present girls? Girls that are interested in tech and are ready to work. Mm -hmm. That's it. And what about the <laughs> mentors? Uh, the mentors, so you see with Lakehub having to select the mentors, mm -hmm. we want to ensure that the people that we are taking over there have the necessary skills and are committed. So, same thing, that's yeah, it. Yeah. What impact does mentoring these girls have on, on uh, in the society? You see how people are always saying that the youth are the future, the youth are the future. Literally, the youth are the future. And we, as, well, if I now say that I'm not the youth, but as elder youths, we have you? 20... <laughs> You are new, you are new. <laughs> but if you compare me and the girls that we mentor, I'm mm -hmm. slightly older or slightly advanced in maybe like career-wise or something. Mm -hmm. So it's up to us to ensure that the ones that are coming after us are equipped and ready for when they get to a point where we are right now. So it's a continuous cycle of uh, the one that is older than me helps me get to where they are, and the one that is younger than me, I help them get to where we are. Mm -hmm. So it's a economic cycle. Uh, eco cycles here, sorry, where we have to ensure that the people that are coming after us are ready and have the right resources, be it uh, career-wise, be it physically, be it mentally, they are ready to be to a point where they, need it, they will be needed to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, are there any challenges that you encounter while undertaking such programs? Yes, there are challenges because <laughs> you'll find that necessarily when you pitch the idea of tech to someone who is a senior, a senior citizen, they'd want to know. If it's not the thing that they learned in computer packages during that time, we'll be like, what are you going to do? They don't necessarily see it as uh, a good career, let's say that. Yeah. So when you have to explain, they won't be, they'll be like, mm, not really. Yeah? I don't see how you're going to make money. Yeah. So that's a challenge where you don't necessarily get support from senior parents. That's actually one of the problems we had uh, when I was being a mentor at Lions. So when you're telling your parent, I'm going to stay behind, I'm going to come home later than usual because I'm staying to be mentored in something, being mentored in tech. And necessarily you can't say, the tech, I'm trying to solve a problem. They'll be like, why don't you solve the problems we have at home right <laughs> now? So you see, that are one of the, they are one of the challenges that you're experiencing. 
and necessarily that uh, the generation right now and maybe generation alpha to come will be tech savvy it means that the generation that came before us we have to explain certain things so imagine right now you're explaining to maybe your grandparent what bitcoin is how will you start mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i say <laughs> new quality, new quality. Mm-hmm. so yeah the understanding of necessarily what is tech and how tech can be a career is a challenge and a conversation that is different to have with someone who is a senior mm-hmm. yeah and uh, so how do you assist the community to adapt to the rampant changes in technology or the advancement of technology through your mentorship program we get them involved we explain what it is what it entails the benefits and not necessarily the benefit of flying to silicon valley but if the problem that these young girls are trying to solve actually work it's not just going to benefit these five girls it's going to benefit you it's going to benefit your neighbor it's going to benefit mm-hmm. your friend from another county so yeah okay and so at a at a local level we're speaking about the lake region uh, you know yeah at a local level has this program produced much fruit and yes. uh, what fruits are those so <laughs> for technovation actually or uh, one year i think it's like in 2018 yeah mm-hmm. the winners actually came from kenya came wow. from kisumu girls interesting yeah? and they flew to silicon valley <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, and the projects that they are doing actually has is really working because they were targeting fgm so we can say the project actually works the project give you the resources that you need to ensure that your project works and you're given the support and you're given uh the necessary skills and you get to network mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so yes it has produced much fruit okay yeah. and uh let's talk about uh faminika <laughs> you are part of the founding members of yes. faminika so what was the inspir- what is faminika to begin with and what was the inspiration to start that so faminika faminika is something that we'll call is targeting agritech so that is agriculture and technology So for these two being my passion this is like ah this is like my baby yeah mm-hmm. because for Faminica what we are doing is we are trying to ensure that the resources that are in agriculture are maximized especially for those who offer agricultural services mm-hmm. we are trying to ensure that they get jobs they get opportunity to practice and for farmers they get the services that it's not as easily acquired as it is right now mm-hmm. through tech And so how do you ensure that these farmers have uh, are connected to local labor for, uh, labor forces and also agricultural consultants through the mobile application mm-hmm. so necessarily that is the founding purpose of the application mm-hmm. to connect person A that is the farmer and the consultant or the person offering the agricultural services mm-hmm. now when we are talking of agricultural services we are not talking about uh, Dr Wakuku Uh, we are talking about even the labor force ule mkulima wa kawaida mwenye anakuja kukubalia shamba we are talking about uh, the person who has the tractor but doesn't necessarily have the farms okay. so we are trying to connect these person a and person b the skills and the farmer themselves together mm-hmm. and uh, do you have a working base to help select farmers or it's a general thing that you're going to do with all farmers so being that agriculture is a passion for the three of us the three founding members we feel like we already have the farmers we have already selected the farmers that we want to do the better testing with yeah so the farmers that we have selected we are going to target three major areas that is poultry and that is maize and that is uh, leafy vegetables so personally we already have the farmers and we've tried to get the experts on board or the people that are going to offer the services but it's going to be a challenge because we they feel that agriculture hasn't been practiced using tech so it's it is a process that we've already accumulated some but we feel like we can still add the numbers and we are adding the numbers especially right now that we are looking forward to a better testing mm-hmm. yeah and uh why these three parts poultry you said poultry and poultry leafy vegetables and maize yeah so why the specific ones look at western region in kenya mm-hmm. those are the sectors that necessarily we are doing we can't say we are going to do <laughs> what is it um, cotton because in western africa we're not doing cotton mm-hmm. the project as of right now for the better testing we have to select th- the three sectors as a starting board let's see how it works but our major focus our end goal or 
the plan that we have when you see it in five, ten years mm -hmm. is that we have all the different sectors mm -hmm. and we are accommodating all the different sectors. But for right now, for the purpose of the better testing, we are trying to target three because our target area is Western region. Okay. And so what, what benefits do you feel that your project will help in the society and also with the food security problem in uh, actually across Africa? Mm -hmm. So with, when we pitch our project, yeah, our target areas is zero hunger, no poverty. We are trying to ensure that food security is there. Because if you look at the aspect of the project itself, where we're connecting the farmer and this person that is going to offer the services, mm -hmm. there's going to be an increase in food production. An increase in food production is actually the growth of a country. Because mm -hmm. that, especially in Kenya, where that is one of the biggest sectors that we have. As when we increase food security, we are increasing the growth of our country because we'll increase exports, we'll increase, we'll have food. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, from what I'm understanding, you're, you're taking on food security at a personal level. Yeah. Do you intend on working with the, the government or different stakeholders on this? Yes. Actually, mm -hmm. one of our target stak stakeholders is the county government, okay. the government at large. Mm -hmm. When we are going to other counties and other areas. Mm -hmm. And one of our actual other is the people who are in private sectors that are in agriculture and people that are passionate about agriculture itself because the farmer is the person who is passionate in agriculture. Mm -hmm. So our stakeholders is anyone who has the passion and the resources to be in agriculture and participate in agriculture. Interesting. And uh, in agriculture, there are certain uh, natural phenomena that uh, affect, you know, mm -hmm. farming, food production, etc., like climate change. Yes. How do you intend to work around such things, like maybe floods, especially in the western region, yeah? Yeah. And food scarcity, the cereals or the seeds, you know? By what? encouraging something that is called climate smart agriculture. By just encouraging all the farmers to participate in smart climate smart agriculture, mm -hmm. with that we are targeting all the phenomenas that are there: the drought, the famine, the insect infestation. So, yeah. Wow. Seeing that you're an let me say an expert in uh, finding uh, <laughs> solutions to problems, as a young person, you've been in the field for quite some time. What can you tell another young person who's seeking to find different solutions to different problems? Yeah. For one, all your solution won't actually impact. Yeah, so don't go there with, with one uh, project and feel like Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg. Oh. Mm -hmm. It takes time, especially when you are in a place of creativity and innovation. The thing that you come up, with, let's say, it's this box. When you are by the end of like maybe three months, it won't be a box. Mm -hmm. It will be a circle. So don't necessarily go there with a fixed mind and be in places where it will encourage your creativity and innovation. Find places where you have uh, somebody who will challenge you. Yeah. So when someone asks you, how does it work? Don't feel offended. Like you should know how this thing works. <laughs> Just explain and explain and explain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was telling my students in Kisumu Girls that when you're pitching a product or when you're pitching your project, mm -hmm. it's like you're flirting with these investors. Yeah? You have to find a way how to sync with them. Yeah? Tell them, let them see your point of view. Because necessarily if they don't see your point of view, why would I waste my money on you? So find places that are encouraging your innovation and your creativity. Mm -hmm. Places not that you're not comfortable with. The more uncomfortable you are, the better. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about the uncomfortability of Sasa, they don't accept you as a person. I'm talking of uncomfortability where you have to con be on a continuous working speed, continuous working speed. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Wow. So what is the vision behind uh, Bella Oicho? Where do we see you in the next maybe five years, ten years? <laughs> eh? uh, in the next five years, ten years. Let's go with five, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like for Faminika to not just only be in Kenya. I want us to... By five years, I want us to be stretching out now to Eastern Africa. Let's go to Uganda, let's go to Tanzania, yeah? I'd want to be, uh, as of right now, I can say I'm comfortable in software development, but I'd like to have better by skills. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to have impacted on my community growth one way or the other, yeah? Uh, let's say I've mentored like 20 girls, I've mentored 100, and I have helped in building up their careers. Uh, five years. Let's see. <laughs>
I mean, a good house and a good count. Typical <laughs> <laughs> youth mentality. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I'd like to have expanded my networks. Yeah. In my career networks. I'd mm. like to have expanded. I'd like to have made good friends, mm. better friends. Mm. Uh, I've expanded my friendship. So, yeah. I, I seek to be your friend. Ah, we have already <laughs> friends. We have established that. <laughs> so, thank you so much, Bella. I appreciate your time coming. Okay. And uh, the information you've given is quite, uh, you know, thought-provoking. And I hope uh, my audience, you have heard that whatever you feel, you need to innovate. Whatever problem you need to solve, go ahead, do it. Find yourself in positions where you're not comfortable. Comfort zone is the killer, <laughs> you know, to success. So go for it, do it. And uh, as always, success is just behind that door. This has been Youth in Action. I am Nyangwesa Grenis. See you next time. This is the way to do it. This is the way.